Well, ladies and gentlemen, please all rise for the national anthem of Denmark, performed by Nadia Melm. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Team Sarland in association with Viasat and sanctioned by WBA Supervisor Dave Roden from Birmingham, United Kingdom, along with Danish Professional Boxing Federation Supervisor Jesper De Jensen. The three judges scoring this fight on the ringside will be Stanley Christodoulou from South Africa, Dr. Ruben M. Garcia from USA, and Alfredo Polanco from Mexico. Our timekeepers at the bell are Per Stugård and Knud Erik Randbeck. And when the action begins, the man in charge of the actions in the ring is the referee hailing from Puerto Rico. Please welcome Luis Pabon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and millions watching around the world, live and in living color from Herning, Denmark, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing to you first, the fighter on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks trimmed with Danish flag. His official weight, 76.1 kilograms. He joins us with 47 fights, 45 victories, 34 of those coming by way of a knockout against only two defeats. Mina de Mahel. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is a former WBA and WBC world champion, hailing from Copenhagen, Denmark. Please welcome the challenger, the Viking warrior, Mickey. Standing ovation. And for introducing Kessler. his opponent across the ring, the fighter on my left, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks trimmed with red and white. His official weight, 76.2 kilograms. His record stands at 41 fights, 36 wins, 4 defeats, and one bout even, including 25 knockouts. Hailing from Belfast, Northern Ireland, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the reigning and defending WBA Super Mulet Champion of the World, Brian McGee. A fabulous clash for the World Super Middleweight title between Ireland's clever and experienced Brian McGee and Denmark's skillful Orthodox and quality operator Mikael Kessler should blend really well on an important night Glenn, for boxing in Europe and around the world. Well, certainly it's a good fight 
And you've got Southport, McGee trying to make an impression right from the start. I think it's very important for McGee to use his boxing skills. He's very good at that, very experienced in and out. Use the movement and see if the South Coast can, can bother Kesler at all. A tad clumsy on his way in there, McGee. Tries to get his jab flowing and get hold of the middle of the ring. Got seasoning and so much grit and experience, McGee. Fresh off that fifth round knockout defeat of Kester's friend Rudy Marcus and good body shot from McGee. Needs to settle well, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Looks a little bit tense at the minute, just snatching with his punches. Kessler's relaxing a bit, and that's a, a nice long jab. Kessler was down in his last fight, but stopped Alan Green in four in Copenhagen. That was it. The light heavyweight limit. Round back down to super middle. Will that be a problem at this stage in his career? Maybe, maybe not. One or two people have said he's looked drawn during the week, but I thought he looked really good on the scales, Glenn. Yeah, he did, and he's talked very well. He's confident, and this is, you know, a big homecoming for him. He wants to Im impress. His only two losses were away from home, and I think he feels that he's invincible in Denmark. Hand speed there from McGee. Might have the edge in that early. Good pinch. These first two or three rounds, that would certainly help. Kester trying to get behind his jab, which is a, a potent weapon. Physically strong and has plenty of power as well, Kessler. Never been short in that department. There's very little he does wrong, really, Kessler. Yeah, very good technically. And he's given McGee plenty of respect in the opening round. He's looking to try and get through with the jab, throwing a few feints. Good jabs there from Kessler. Just short with the right hand. Might be looking for a possible vulnerability in the body of McGee. Was down. A number of times to Lucian Boutte, McGee, out in Canada. And again, Kessler with a right hand downstairs. There is some gaps there, McGee needs to be careful. Gets his own left back. Good start. Remember, your championship boxing from Herning in Denmark. Okay. Nip and tuck first round, Kessler might have got the better. Yeah, maybe slightly, you know, he's at home and he just finished a little better, a couple of stronger punches, but very little in it. It's the first defense of this WBA 12 stone belt for Brian McGee. He was elevated after winning the interim version. Complicated situation with uh, Andre Ward, really the WBA champion, but good start to the second by McGee on the front foot, using speed, nice left hand, just trying to befuddle Kessler, who's slightly marked up and has a tendency, Kessler, to cut. Head went in as well, though. Yes, he started this round a little more positively. McGee, I think he feels he's got to take the fight to Kessler. I'm sure they're aware they can't allow, they can't have close rounds. They're not going to get a steal a decision away from home. The body shot from Kessler. McGee is down and really badly hurt. And it's early in the second round. And in the fight, he just about gets to his feet. But that was the plan from Kessler to expose the McGee body. He's brave, he's been up before from body shots, but that looked a sickener. Carl Proch mentioned that he thought McGee was susceptible to body punches, and it just proves there that he was. Good, solid right hand, straight through the middle. Got a fight on that gum shield, but Kessler knows now the key. The crowd rally behind their hero. He's brave, McGee. He's almost trying to go for broke here. Another body shot gets in. Okay, okay, okay. Well, he's reaching, he's lunging forward, he's walking under those body punches. They took an awful lot out of him. 34 knockouts on Kessler's slate. And 
A big gulp of air he tries to get. In between the gun shield on the right hand, just misses there. Kessler. A minute left of the second. Will McGee survive? Yeah, he's busting McGee up here. Good solid shots. The mouth is open from McGee. He's trying to keep it together. He's still taking it to Kessler. That might be something of a mistake. Right hand. And there's just the gaps that Kessler is finding with precision, accuracy. And he wants to make a statement too, doesn't he? Well, he's got the crowd all clapping. Great atmosphere. And because that wonderful start for McGee is still there. Oh! He really is in a pickle here, Brian McGee. Well, Headshots too from Kessler. There's a body shot went in and then a clash of heads a little bit. Oh, look at that. Almost went down, turned away, McGee. Referee Lewis Pabon takes up the count. Can McGee get through to the bell? It goes. He wearily gets back to his corner. Oh dear, oh dear, for the Irish fans here in Herning. Yes, it's all going horribly wrong for Brian McGee. He's been hurt very badly. He's hanging on. 10-7 round. 10-7 round. Big, big round. And Kessler is strong, is confident. The crowd is behind him. And he's really up against it here, McGee. There's a lovely right hand. He took it to the jab to the head. And then slipped the right hand down to the body. There, there was a body shot, but also a clash of heads. And then that right hand as well. And turned away there, McGee. Third round scheduled for 12, but how much more can Brian McGee take? He's just got hold of this WBA belt. Is he going to lose it in his first defence? to the body, down again, this is so early in the round, and I'm not sure, no, the referee calls it off, a dramatic win for Mikkel Kessler, a four-time world champion, the Danes celebrate, Kessler back in the big time, as he blows away Brian McGee with body shots, well, that sent shockwaves around the sport. Well, the stadium erupted into noise with that right hand. And he really has done it in style. And there's some big, big fights out there. But Mikhail Kessler proven that he is still very much at the top of his game. Some people doubted after the losses to Calzaghi and to Ward. How long at the top level Mikel Kessler will survive, but you know what he said in that interview with Andy Scott earlier in the week, that his friends around him would tell him if he didn't have it, and what he's proved tonight, he most certainly does have plenty. Bring on Ward, bring on Frotch again. What a 2013 in store, Glenn. Well, most definitely a call Frotch. I mean, the set of a, a mega fight there. And, you know, he's, he's still on top power, and what a fight that would be. I think Carl was saying back in the studio, they spoke earlier, that Carl will want him to fight in Britain. I'm sure Mikel will want to fight here in Denmark, because he's never lost in Denmark. Frotch has never lost in Britain. Where do they go? Well, we'll do that. I'm sure we will care as long as they get it on. We just want the fight. Let them settle that out. Obviously, Carl would love it in Nottingham, and you know, fairly maybe he should get that opportunity. Hunted his prey. Got the weakness right early. Kessler knew that really it was a matter of time. And Brian McGee, who deserves so much credit for what he's done in, in the sport, and he's had a great last two or three years, but he was up at another notch in class, in levels. It's been, you know, it's a great career for Brian McGee. He's done fantastically well to get here. He's at a very high level, but every time he stepped into that 
major level, he's come unstuck. And, you know, it's a shame, but he's in with a very, very good fighter. Remember, he did beat Carl Froch. Reenacting the body shot with the right hand, Mikel Kessler, all smiles. He's a lovely guy. He's a credit not only to Danish sport, but to, to boxing all through Europe and the world. A real personality, engaging. And at 33, he's got plenty left in the tank. What of McGee now? Well, he's failed at the very, very highest level, but, you know, he's still a good competitor. And, you know, there's still fights out there for him, just coming down the level. McGee saying the first one that hit me, that was the one. That first one took everything out of him and he never recovered from that. Lovely to hear the respect. No trash talking between the pair beforehand. And afterwards, all friends. Great advert for boxing. It really is. A couple of great guys. And they've just been in there, give their best. And then they're all friends again. Classy guys. As is Carl Froch. It wasn't the same as started one. Promoters get together. Make the rematch happen, please. Minadei Mahel, ladies and gentlemen, we have time of 24 seconds in the round number three when our referee in charge, Luis Pabon, steps in and calls a halt to the contest. The winner by TKO and the new WBA Super Middleweight World Champion from Copenhagen, Denmark, the Viking Warrior, Mickey.